the 10th of January 2014. Well, it's a brand new day on the last day of the second week of January. How time fast flies. I don't know how it is, but it just flies so fast and a day is gone like that. And no matter how much we say it, it will go fast. And at the end of the day, it's another day gone. And good morning, Sri Lanka. We give every day, every new day, a new start, a new beginning, a new hope and glory. And that's what we are good at here on Good Morning Sri Lanka. MTV Sports always brings you nothing but the best, as we always say. Now today, I got a very, very um, special and in interesting guest, as we always do. But he is not a complete newcomer to the show as well. He's been here twice so far on Good Morning Sri Lanka, back in the days uh, about a couple of years back. But he is back again, um, sharing with us, he's going to share with us some of those interesting um, jobs that he's been here around and jobs that he has touched upon. And of course, it is our pleasure to have him on board here on Good Morning Sri Lanka as well. He is a president of Young Voices, and we'll be hearing more about what Young Voices is. Please welcome to Good Morning Sri Lanka for the third time, Ishan Shalil. Good morning to you. Good morning, um, good morning, and uh, wish you a very happy New Year. To, happy. To, to, to the entire audience, I wish a very, very happy New Year. Wish you the same. 2014 has been uh, terrific, I'm sure, for you. How has it been so far? Definitely. Uh, you know, now today is the 10th of January. Up yes. to now, it's great. Up to now, uh, it's great. And I'm, I'm assuming that uh, in the future, it will be even greater. Well, passing the good vibes here on Good Morning Sri Lanka. Every day is a new beginning of, uh, is our theme of the show, uh, Jalil. What do you think about it? Uh, it is true, you know, yeah. like... When I think about my life also and uh -huh. like the lives of many people around me, okay, um, every day is a new beginning. It actually relates to me, you know, like relates to me and all the people around me. I think it's so. a common uh, thing that we all have to, you know, embrace. I exactly, think. exactly. I also can because it's all to, it. to do with change, you know. Exactly. It's all to do with change. Change management. Exactly. We always yeah. have to embrace it, no matter what. Exactly. Good and bad things. All the news have to come to our lives and we need to uh, learn the fact that we embrace it with good hope, I guess. Exactly. All right, we, I do have the visiting card of Ishan. That's the first thing I asked from him when he entered our studios. And my word, there are so many um, designations I can just read out. So I shall read a couple of them, uh, Ishan. Okay. He's a student at University of Colombo. Faculty of Arts, reading for a degree in international relations. Actually, he had already done the degree and he is awaiting results. And uh, he is already preparing for the graduation because he knows that he has absolutely aced it. He is a member of the University of Colombo Arts Faculty English Debating Society. He is a member of the International Youth Task Force, organizing the World Youth Conference 2014. And now on this visiting card, Ishan, there is a specific line mm -hmm. that just mesmerized me right. and blew me away to an extent uh, which words cannot describe. Okay. And I shall read the line to all of you watching the show right now. There are those who look at things the way they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and ask why not. Ishan, you came up with this line. Tell me what was behind this line when you came up. I know that you read this somewhere. Yes, yes. yes but yes. how did the entire process come, you know? How did you think that this should be the mark? This should be what I need to put on my business card? No, so simply this is who I am. You know, this like is who you are. Yeah. Can as you in elaborate basically a bit more? basically I'm someone who always dreams, who always has big hopes, who always has high hopes. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I dream, I dream big. Okay. I don't dream small, I dream big. So, uh, and I dream things which others might think are quite impossible for a blind person like me, for a disabled person like me. I wouldn't use the word disabled though, Ishan. I would say differently abled because uh, no one can do what you do right now. Yeah. No, but assuming like, yeah. the fact 
that you going by the fact that what you just said because going by your CV it's literally impossible for me to even you know read through all the qualifications that you've got tell me about your history how did you come up uh, doing all this which are absolutely remarkable um, so <coughs> I'll start with uh, the times did I, uh, the times at uh, St. Thomas's College okay. when I did my A levels. Mm -hmm. So at the time, uh, I was just a very ordinary kid uh, doing like economics, uh, Greek and Roman civilization, and, and English. Okay. And even that has a different story. Like you know, there were people who said, "Dishan, don't do economics. It's very hard for you. You'll have to like you know come across a lot of diagrams." and uh, etc etc but I always uh, I'm willing to you know go out and challenge the norms mm -hmm. so that's exactly what I did I did uh, economics and I, I uh, passed without any any hassle okay so but then again when I like coming back to the point when I went to St. Thomas's College I um, did something remarkable I uh, did rowing as a sport and um, at the time, my coach was Mr. Ajit Gunavardhana. I, I still remember him with uh, honor, so honor and respect, definitely, because he was one man who changed my life for the better. So, when I did rowing, uh, my crew members actually initially they didn't know what to do with me, because this was the first time that a blind person did something like this in the world. Yes, and. That's I'll come to that later. Whoa. So, All right. you know, uh, like, and then I ended up uh, participating for the Royal Thomian Mini Regatta mm -hmm. in this 2007, 2007, 2007 okay. October. Mm -hmm. And after a while, I was being informed by a lot of people who had actually researched like about uh, doing rowing as a blind person. Okay. Lots of people told me, Ishan. You're the first born blind person in the world to row. Mm -hmm. So uh, up to now, like, as in there are lots of people, lots of blind people who are doing rowing even now, like in the world. But I'm like the first born blind person to do competitive rowing. So that's of course a remarkable, remarkable achievement in my life. So that made me to think, okay, come on. I am not the ordinary kid. Even if I am the ordinary kid, there's something something extraordinary within me. Mm -hmm. So that's when I realized my potential, and that's when I started to tap into my potential. And now I'm in this position doing all sorts of things which you already saw in the business card. Wow. Short and sweet, simple as that, but more coming up on Ishan's life and achievements and of course something more that uh, what you want to listen to and share with us. Because I'm going to ask him after we take a little bit of a break with a song obviously which is coming up about how he surfs online, goes on Facebook and then he manages to read everything, how it is possible. We'll be finding out after this song, after a short commercial break as well. This is one of those songs that you really want to soothe in your mind. Enjoy. Welcome back to the show. We've got the president of Young Voices and so many more. He's an entrepreneur and he is a motivational speaker, I could say, uh, Mishan Jalil. Uh, welcome back to Good Morning Sri Lanka. How are you feeling? Feeling great after <laughs> listening to that nice song by Eagles. I'm, you're a big fan of Eagles, aren't you? Yes, I am. What's your favorite uh, song of Eagles? Uh, the one which you played already, Hotel California. Uh huh. We've got more Eagles songs coming up. I think the producers kind of knew your taste before you came, so. Uh, Probably telepathy. <laughs> telepathy. <laughs> that is a good word to use. Of course, it is. It does exist, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. If you it think about exist. it. Yeah, if you think about it. Well, anyway, we'll be focusing on Jalil's education background as well, going way back uh, to school life. Tell us uh -huh. about it. Um, up until my O levels, I went to the blind school in Ratmalana, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, after performing well at my like for my at my O level examinations in 2005, okay, I uh, entered St. Thomas's College in 2006 to do my A levels. And uh, as I told you earlier, I did uh, economics, Greek and Roman civilization and English literature. Okay. And uh, like, other than for the remarkable achievement of rowing, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I was actively involved in many clubs and societies in school. I was uh, a member of the uh, United Nations Club. Okay. I was a member of the Modern Music Society. I was a member of the uh, Thomia, uh, the Union for the Preservation of Thomian Traditions. Uh, I was actually the museum officer of that uh, club. Ishan, did and someone uh, ask you to join these clubs or did you voluntarily think this is a thing I should do? It goes do? both ways. You know, some people said, Ishan Machang, why don't you join this? And, okay. I, and I also thought, now say for, for instance, UN club. Uh -huh. I voluntarily went and joined, you know, like I wanted to join the UN club because the UN is one of my passions. Okay. So, you know, like that was, uh, if, if I may say, that was the beginning of my experience with the UN. Okay. So, as in, even though it's not the actual UN, uh -huh. you know, even though like, like the fact that you just get into the school UN club, that itself matters a lot, you know, so. Thinking about what you've accomplished over the years, you've mm -hmm. been an active member of so many clubs as you mentioned. Yes. And then you did so many studies, got through degrees and all. Yes. Results pending, hopefully you get through that as well with uh, flying colours. <laughs> and on yes. top of that you did drawing as well. How was time management? Was that an issue or how did you manage everything on time? Now say uh, when I was in college, when I was at St. Thomas's, okay. studying and doing drawing was a very hard thing. You know yeah. like... Uh, School is over by 1.30 and basically I just get into the car of some friend of mine and go to Bear Lake for practices. Okay. And then <laughs> when I finish practices, it's like 6.30, 7 in the night, you know. Uh -huh. And then when I like go home in the bus, I'm like dead tired. So, uh -huh. but then again, I somehow like, you know, I was able to manage my time. Okay. Uh, regardless of all odds. Uh, even in university, like now, now, like even though I'm done with University of Colombo, like my degree, mm -hmm. uh, while I was doing the degree, I was like doing many things like, you know, as, as, as I have told you earlier, like I was in, I, I'm still in road track. I'm uh, like still in the debating society. I'm organizing the world conference on youth. Yes, that will be my next question. Exactly. Ishan, so like yeah. all of that, I, I am like pretty able to manage my time. Managing time is also a kind of art, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It's but a sort I of an inexplainable art. You can, you just can't explain exactly how you do it. But I think it comes happens. naturally yeah. as well. The <laughs> more you work, and I think yeah. hard hard work and dedication all, always pays off for anyone. Definitely, definitely. All right. What's your exact role in the International Youth Task Force? Because um, mm -hmm. in May, I assume yes, the yes. biggest World Youth Conference 2040. That's for this year is happening. Yes. Uh, yes. We want to know what you do and tell us about the entire conference. What okay. is it all about? Okay. Okay. So I, I started like this. Okay. Uh, I think. Okay. So Banu, you mm -hmm. and even the people who are watching this, all of you are, all of you all. Some of you must be knowing about the Millennium Development Goals, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in year 2000, the UN uh, designated something called the Millennium Development Goals, eight goals simply to make the world a better place by 2050, okay. right? Those included uh, preventing HIV and AIDS, uh, giving uh, primary education to all uh, children, you know, so on. However, the Millennium Development Goals were designed by a panel of experts. But when I say a panel of experts, it was designed only by a panel of experts and it was not a consultative process. Mm -hmm. No one was consulted when the Millennium Development Goals were created. So now the Millennium Development Goals are coming to an end in 2015, okay. right? So we need to have a post MDG agenda. And what is that? So that is how the World Conference on Youth is related to the uh, 